One of the fundamental problems with Islam is that it doesn't accept anyone can disbelieve without assassinating their character, without accusing them of insincerity, dishonesty, arrogance and hiding the truth. It regards disbelief as a deliberate choice to be evil, a malicious intent. Let me be clear, I'm not talking about those who never heard about Islam or heard a distorted version, nor am I talking about sinful believers who will be taken out of hell eventually. I'm talking about the kuffar, those who have received and understood its message, yet don't believe, the ones who will burn in hell for eternity. The correct definition of a kafir is a person who knows that something is a truth, he is convinced that something is a truth, but still he denies that, that truth. Somebody who disbelieves while knowing the truth. So this is the meaning of a kafir, one who knows the truth, but he covers it up. Because he's covering, he's a liar. Firstly, the claim that the kuffar know Islam is true, but intentionally hide it, is a nonsensical claim. If they really did know Islam was true, they would know that they would burn in hell eternally. If such a person existed, they would obviously be mentally ill. Secondly, belief is not a simple matter of choice. We can't choose to believe something if we don't find the evidence sufficiently compelling. In addition, humans don't perceive religious evidence in exactly the same way. Our perceptions are influenced by upbringing, education, experiences, culture, community and many other factors. Religious claims that appear convincing to one person can appear flawed to another. It's not because they are insincere, dishonest or evil. Every devout Muslim, Christian, Mormon, Jehovah Witness, etc. is convinced the evidence for their religion is undeniable. They feel certain that anyone who examines it sincerely cannot fail to see what they see. However, they can't all be right. So at least some of that evidence must in fact be flawed. The certainty that some of these believers have cannot be due to strength of evidence. So where does this certainty come from? It comes from the strength of their faith in themselves that their perception of the evidence is inerrant. But since they can't all be right, this faith is misplaced in at least all but one religion. And that one religion that got it right is, of course, always yours. And we say that any person who is sincere and who is exposed to the teachings of Islam will find the truth in Islam. The reality is that disbelief is neither a choice nor a malicious intent, and no one can be blamed for rejecting claims that, for whatever reason, don't inspire or no longer inspire conviction. What makes this worse is that the kuffar are not a small amount of evil individuals. They are a huge section of the human race. In fact, many classical scholars say the people of hell will vastly outnumber the people of paradise. The Quran says, Yet he, Satan, has led astray a great multitude of you. Have you no sense? This is the hellfire which you are promised. Enter it this day because you disbelieved. And Satan's estimate of them proved true, for they followed him, all but a group of believers. And though thou try much, most people will not believe. I will surely fill hell with jinn and people all together. There are several hadith that are even more specific. For example, the Prophet said, The first one to be called on the day of resurrection will be Adam. He will be shown his progeny, and it will be said, Bring forth those who are to be sent to hell from amongst your progeny. He will say, O Lord, how many should I bring forth? He will say, Bring forth from every hundred, 99. The total amount of humans who have ever lived on this planet, past and present, is 108 billion. The previous hadith says 99 out of 100 are going to burn in hell. So that's over 99 billion humans and counting. 
Think about this for a moment. The vast majority of the human race will be tortured eternally in hell. No matter what these billions of unbelievers have done, the punishment is eternal torture. There are different levels of hell. They start at the level of unbearable agony, and then it's all downhill from there. The Prophet said, The person who will receive the least punishment amongst the people of hell will have sandals of fire which will make his brains boil like a cauldron. He will not think that anyone else is more severely punished than him, but he will be the most lightly punished. By the way, Hadith explains that this refers to the Prophet's uncle, Abu Talib, an old man of limited means who took his orphan nephew Muhammad under his wing, cherished him, clothed him, fed him, and protected him from persecution. However, he remained a pagan, and so will burn in hell forever. I mention this because when I bring up my objection to hell, I am frequently met with, shouldn't Hitler be punished? Or mass murderers? Or rapists? Let's be clear. The kafir is one who rejects Islam. God forgives other sins as long as one is a believer. It's belief that is the crucial factor here. Even the most sinful Muslims will one day be taken out of hell. Another hadith says that out of every 1,000 humans, 999 will go to hell. Allah will say to our father Adam, والسلام, take out all the people that's going to go to hellfire. Adam will say, how many? From every 1,000, 999 to hell and one to paradise. And it adds that they will mostly be from the two tribes of Ya'ajuj and Ma'ajuj. Honestly, I challenge anyone to make sense of this hadith. Ya'ajuj and Ma'ajuj are supposed to be two ancient tribes locked up behind an iron wall. This hadith implies they are 99.9% .9 of the human race. That means billions of human beings are living undiscovered somewhere on our planet. Or are they the Russians and Americans? Or perhaps the Chinese? Or are they some future group related to the original tribes, as Yasir Qadi says? Then again, perhaps it's one of those supra-rational issues. Islam does not come with anything that is irrational, but it does come with things that are supra-rational. I realize many Muslims these days are starting to reject hadith, and I don't blame them. Honestly, some of the things in hadith will make you either laugh or cry, or both. So let's forget hadith. Let's stick to Qur'an only. The Qur'an says that most people will not believe, and that a great multitude will burn in hell, which will be full. So let's attempt to reduce that number of 99 billion to just over half. Is 60 billion a fair estimate? I'll tell you what. You pick the number. What proportion of 108 billion humans equates to most people? How many billions of human beings tortured eternally are you okay with? It's no wonder Muslims don't like to focus on the reality of hell as described in the Quran. And they gloss over it saying, oh, it's up to Allah to judge. The kuffar must be some vague, depraved, evil monsters, maliciously concealing the truth, in league with Satan and waging war against God. They are irredeemably evil. It's only by dehumanising disbelievers that one can even remotely attempt to justify the barbaric insanity of eternal torture. But can you really dehumanise half the human race? Billions and billions of fallible human beings, neighbours, colleagues, friends and even family. Dividing the human race into a simplistic dichotomy of good and evil, eternal pleasure and eternal torture, on the basis of whether fortune has favoured them with the correct inconclusive beliefs, betrays a profound misunderstanding of the human condition.